Okay, my friends, we're gonna do another one of those videos where you're gonna get a lot of information. All right, so this is not for the people that just want flashy images and, and with the short attention spans. This is for the people that are hungry for the real knowledge, that really wanna know, okay? So that's the only people that I'm concerned about making videos for anyways. So um, we're gonna look at some clips, okay? And then I'm gonna recommend some books and I strongly suggest you check out all of it, all right? It just adds to our breadth of knowledge. Now, here's the thing. When we look at clips like this, when we read certain things, when we, when we gather certain information, it's of utmost importance that we do not jump to forming an opinion about it, okay? So we don't see something and immediately judge it and say, well, I disagree, oh, well, no, or, oh, yeah, 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 okay, I agree. It's neither of those things. You see, the media creates, they invest so much in creating an emotional response to a topic. And they do this, they can really do this by politicizing it. If you can take a topic and create a left-right thing out of it, you can elicit an emotional response from the topic. And people are such that when their tribe says something, they write off the opposite of it. So, well, I'm on the left, so my tribe says this, uh, I don't even care what is on the right, it's all bullshit. Or my tribe's on the right, uh, like this, okay? And it can cloud, the, the way that human psychology works, it overrides rational thinking or um, reason or any of these kind of things. It's all about eliciting the emotional response. So. When you watch stuff, when you gather information, it's very important not to be drawn in to the emotional response. You watch it for what it is. So if someone mentions something about um, climate change, you don't just automatically, ah, oh, well, Bob, bullshit. It's all bullshit, you know, because it's been politicized or, or you think that you know uh, what Congresswoman talks about the Green New Deal or something. All of that is designed to create associations in your subconscious to write off certain things okay it's neither right nor left it just is what it is so extract just observe and extract what is useful and do not be pulled in to the emotional response the first clip we're going to look at is by a guy named jeremy rifkin and he wrote a book in 1981 i believe called entropy and i highly recommend this book it describes in crystal clear detail the nature of how our concept of progress is a complete delusion. It's, it's an illusion and delusion. So I strongly recommend you to read this book, uh, Entropy by Jeremy Rifkin, and now we're gonna watch uh, a small clip from him. The first law of energy that governs the universe, all the energy in the universe that's here today was here at the beginning, the Big Bang and we'll be here to the end of time. We've not created any more energy or destroyed energy since the Big Bang. What's here has always been here. Conservation law. The second law of thermodynamics says that's true. All the energy's been here since the Big Bang. It's not, nothing new has been created or destroyed, but energy does change form every moment, but only in one direction, from hot to cooled off through the universe, from Organized to disorganized the universe, from hot to cold the universe. So we had that little big bang and then it spread out around the universe to equilibrium. Entropy is a measure of the energy still there, no longer usable. Okay, from this clip we see the first law of thermodynamics is that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only its form can change. Most of us know this law. But very few of us understand the second law of thermodynamics. And that is that the energy can only be changed and in fact is changing in one direction, from hot to cold, from organized to chaotic, from dense to dispersed, or my favorite way to describe it is from usable to unusable. For example, if I have a piece of wood or coal, I, th there's potential energy there, and then I burn it and it can produce work, work being energy, and it produces smoke. Now, never can I take that smoke and then recreate the piece of wood. Energy never flows in that direction. Likewise, never could I 
take this cup of tea, say we have a nice hot cup of tea, and we set it into a room. The heat from the cup of tea is going to disperse into the room. Never will you set a cold cup of tea in a room and all of the heat concentrate into the cup of tea. It doesn't work that way. So it always goes from hot to cold, or in the case of the wood, from organized or potential to dispersed or unusable. So what is economics all about? We take available material and energy out of nature. It can be a rare earth for your smartphone. It can be a metallic ore for your automobile. Uh, it could be a piece of coal for energy. And then we extract it, we ship it, we store it, we produce goods and services from it, we consume it, and we recycle it back to nature. That's the value chain, right? Okay, here he is describing what we do in the modern economic system. We extract usable or potential energy from nature, convert it to a temporary form, and then it is dispersed into its unusable form. This is called entropy, this process. And in fact, what we have called progress throughout human history, especially the last few hundred years, is simply a speeding up of this entropy process. So we are taking resources from nature and turning them from their usable state to their unusable state. Now it can never go back the other way. All the coal that we're burning and continue to burn and have for three and four hundred years, it's never going back the other way. All the, the metals that we've mined are never going back the other way. They're sitting in landfills dispersed and they're all over the place dispersed unusable. Okay, All the silver that is in the warheads that is boo, obliterated, unusable, never coming back. So many, oh, everything is subject to the law of entropy. Okay, so we have to have this, and I strongly suggest that you watch a couple of interviews with Jeremy Rifkin. His whole kind of spiel is sort of the same in each one, so you can just pick one and listen to it. And again, don't formulate a quick, you know, I think he's probably like left-leaning politically, but it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. What matters is the message. So listen to it, and then let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, the next clip is from one of my favorite speakers, William Reese, okay? I love his, his method of delivery and his attitude, okay? But he's one of the few that are not afraid to look at things, our modern world, from a realistic standpoint. He's not selling any hopium, you understand? Saying, it's gonna be okay if we all just drive electric cars, then everything's gonna be okay. Or if we just some green new deal, if, if everything's green, then it's gonna be okay. Or if we just all switch to wind and solar, it'll all be okay. Bullshit. It's not happening. That's hopium. The hope that we can just continue what we're doing uh, indefinitely. So all of the symptoms of uh, collapsing biodiversity, land degradation, climate change, and so on and so forth, are simply that symptoms of overshoot, of gross human ecological dysfunction. We have ceased to be citizens of the planet. We have turned ourselves through our technological optimism, our growth fetish, into parasites on the planet. We are literally consuming the biosphere, converting it into human bodies, animal bodies, and all of the artifacts of our culture, and in the process, inevitably diminishing nature. It is an absolute contradiction to say that you can have even green growth and uh, conserve the uh, so-called environment, because all growth involves the consumption of material and the dissipation of energy, which means a further encroachment on the domain of nature that remains. So essentially, he's talking about entropy. He's saying that we can, all growth, even so-called green growth, is relies upon the extraction of resources and the dissipation of energy. Now, the human endeavor has become possessed by the delusion of unlimited growth, unchecked, infinite expansion and growth. And if we just consume this planet, we'll just get on to the stars. We'll just go off into Mars and create colonies on Mars and we'll become interplanetary beings. Delusion. Delusion, my friends. Okay, so let us check out the next clip. So we are now sustaining the growth ethic by growing 
uh, by permanently dissipating the very biophysical basis of our own existence. This is what it looks like. It's an unsustainable fossil fuel driven exponential growth. For 10,000 years, nothing happened. We didn't grow. For the last 200 years, we've been engaged in a process of exponential or super exponential growth that produces this inordinate hockey stick graph. But we have to understand that only seven generations of 20,000 generations of human beings have experienced sufficient growth even to notice it in their lifetimes. It's just our last few generations. Yet we take this to be the norm. What we think of in our culture as the norm is the single most anomalous or abnormal period in the history of the human species. Listen to what this man is saying and take absorb this, okay? For 10,000 years, nothing changed. Really, for 200,000 years, there was not enough change happen in one person's lifetime for anyone to notice, technologically or in civilization or in anything. Human beings were in a whole different state of unified consciousness. We've become more and more fractured as the population has exploded, exploded in the past 200 years. So what he's saying in that, in that clip was that what people take to be the norm is actually the most abnormal period in the history of mankind. So people that say, well, we've done, my great grandparents were driving gasoline vehicles or, well, my great grandparents was farming with, with uh, pet petroleum based chemicals. None of that matters. That's the blink of an eye in, in the term and the span of human history. We have to expand our scope to actually, to really get a good idea of what is happening to see the bigger picture we have to look on a much larger time scale so anything that is in the past 50 or 100 years is virtually poof, hardly even existent on the timeline of humanity yet its impact on the planet the system that sustains us that we are a part of where it's inseparable from us our impact on the planet has reached levels of armageddon so we are literally consuming the planet out from under us. And it means increasingly every one of us is competing with everyone else for the ever diminishing capacity of this planet. This week, a new report came out about the plunging loss of, of tuna in the seas. It's just one of many fisheries in, in dire straits. As more and more people rise higher on the income chain and start eating more and more meat, we're not gonna eat less meat. The trend on the planet is more and more meat consumption as incomes grow. This helps you to understand what we are seeing and what we will be seeing in the future in terms of the world system. Okay, There, there are fewer and fewer resources being chased after by more and more people. It's simple math and physics. Okay, my friends, go to worldometer.com and look at the population list okay it took us all of human history so 200 at least 200,000 some would say 6 million years to reach 1 billion in 1804 the second billion the doubling of the population only took 130 years by 1930 and then the third billion only took 30 years okay now fourth billion only took 14 years the the next billion i mean okay five billion in 1987 seven billion in 2011 blah 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 yada yada it goes up and up like this the amount the expansion the rate of increase is completely off the charts unbelievable and if you don't the relationship between the human population the scale of the human enterprise and energy consumption uh, here is a comparison of the population plus per capita consumption and total consumption. They're virtually identical curves. Take away the energy, the whole rest of the system collapses. Here's another consequence of exponential, exponential growth. The area under the curve represents the total consumption that took place in the period that we're talking about. 50% of all the fossil fuel ever used on planet Earth has been consumed in the last 30 years. Did you hear what I said? 
50% of all the fossil fuel ever consumed, 50% of the human emissions of carbon dioxide in the last 30 years. The rate we are consuming resources is faster and faster by the moment. So when your parents, or if you're old enough, and you're thinking back to the 60s and 70s, and you think in your mind that we are in any way still living in the same society that we did then, that's part of the illusion. Everything is so dramatically sped up. Just since 1991, 50% of all fossil fuels have been consumed since the history of mankind. And this is not just fossil fuel, it's everything across the board. All minerals, all resources, all the stuff is just being depleted so fast, as fast as could possibly happen. Okay guys, the next person up is one of my favorites for his realism, his poetic realism. His, his delivery is just beautiful, all right? Now I suggest you read his books as well as watch his interviews or his speeches. Uh, he wrote a couple of books, well a number of books, but the ones I would recommend are um, Empire of Illusion and America the Farewell Tour where he describes how we are already far into collapse. The new order of the world is coming. The collapse of the American empire is already in the rearview mirror. It's already been happening, so there's nothing we can do to prevent it in any way. It's already happening. The next rising world order is that of China and Russia, and he's been talking about this since 2009. Well, even beyond that, since 2000. Okay, that's before all of this. So, he's really worth listening to. Fire, to emotionally accept impending disaster, to attain the gut level understanding that the power elite will not respond rationally to collapse is as difficult to accept as our own mortality. The most daunting existential struggle of our time is to ingest this awful truth intellectually and emotionally and yet rise up to resist the corporate forces that are destroying us. Here's the main thing I want you to take from this video, my friends, is that collapse is on its way and is already happening. So while everything I made in the last video pointed out the secret agenda and all of this, the Illuminati and the, the manipulation of human perception, that's all happening. But at the same time, there is a much greater something happening, and that is total system collapse. It's the nature of complex structures and civilizations to collapse. There's a reason we don't call ourselves Romans. We don't call ourselves Egyptians or any of the other great civilizations. They have came and went. The only difference this time is in our technology and how massively complex everything has gotten. So, in this next clip, he's going to recommend three books. I suggest you take notes and read these books, my friends. Complex civilizations, as many anthropologists have observed, have a habit of ultimately destroying themselves. Joseph Tainter in The Collapse of Complex Societies, Charles Redman in Human Impact on Ancient Environments, and Ronald Wright in A Short History of Progress have laid out the familiar patterns that lead to systems breakdown. The difference is that when we go down this time, the whole planet will go with us. There will, with this final collapse, be no new lands to exploit, no new civilizations to conquer, no new peoples to subjugate, no new resources to plunder. Okay, my friends, I hope you got something from this video. And while there will be no hopium offered at the end, I can say the one truth that to the awakened mind, none of this has any bearing. This is neither bad news nor good news. It just is exactly as it is, which ultimately, in the biggest sense, is perfection. And so there is nothing to fear in any way whatsoever. If, this, if what I just said doesn't make sense to you, then focus all your efforts on awakening to your true nature. That is all that matters. If each of us do that, the collective will take care of itself and everything becomes clear. There are no more questions. 
All right, my friends. So uh, one of the most important things we can be doing is growing our own food. And for that reason, I have started my other channel, Garden Like a Viking. Yes, I'm the Viking. And there I will be giving you all kinds of tips and techniques and methods to be growing your own sustenance. This is so important as we move into total collapse, societal collapse, food system collapse, economic collapse. It's all coming. Nothing to be afraid of, but definitely something to be prepared for. Okay? And do that by growing your own sustenance. I can't say this enough. That's what everyone used to be doing. So let us go back to that. So subscribe to my other channel, my other two channels really, and you'll get a lot of information on what works and most importantly what doesn't work. Yes? All right, my friends.